everyone. Welcome to Metaphysical. Why is Hollywood called Hollywood? Did you know that esoteric symbolism is everywhere in the performing arts? Why are messages, patterns, and symbols repeated over and over in our music, movies, and shows? Well, the occult reasons behind it may shock you, so get ready for an in-depth discussion from a remote viewer, John Vivanco, and me, investigative researcher Rob Counts, with a show that's out of this world. Yeah. John. Rob. What's up, dude? Did you vote for Pedro? Um, you got a vote for Pedro shirt on? Yeah, actually, I did. Yeah. I like pulling out this shirt every once in a while. It's a great movie. Yeah, I know. It's a great movie. Reminds me of a childhood I never had. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that was a funny movie. God, it was that hilarious. Was that again. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I remember the first time I watched it, I was just like, you've got to be kidding. This is great. Like, like the most of the movie are just like, what are these guys even doing? And then, you know, the dance scene at the end just like blew me away. I like, yeah, I, know. I like movies that don't fall into the whole programming side. And this yeah. movie didn't seem to do that. You know, for me, it was like, oh, okay, this, this is like original. This is very original with no real, like, I don't know, maybe there was. No, maybe was I missed it. Some totally original messaging. Yeah. And there was so much nostalgia in it too. Um, and I think one of my favorite things to do is cook for someone and then just put the food in front of them and say, Eat the food. Tina, eat the food. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, I think what's so cool about that movie is that it doesn't actually fit into the the paradigm of what a Hollywood film actually is. Right. And, and that's kind of what we're going to be getting into today, which is kind of the rabbit hole that is the mysterious, bizarre planet of Hollywood. <laughs> it's deep. I mean, it's so deep. It's it's hard because for me, it's like I don't I don't even want to watch any of this stuff anymore. I can't. I notice too much of the symbolism, mm. and so I just I'm, I can't. I just can't do it. You know, the, there is, I mean, really seeped in everything now. There's so much symbolism that, like, actually, if you're researching stuff all the time, it's impossible not to see, and it's not. Every science fiction or or sci, yeah, like or occult movie out there has just heaps and heaps of it that's introducing. And like the weird, like Harry Potter was just like seven or eight eight movies of just was it eight movies or nine actually? Are you serious? It was eight that much? Nine. Like I, I I totally checked out of that after like the second one. So I mean, just every single part of it was like a history of the occult. Like it was referencing history that I had found through like deep research and stuff. And I was just like, well, I would pause and I'd be like, you just called it that. It would be like, you're talking about Nicholas Flamel. And if you go down the rabbit hole of Nicholas Flamel, this like, I mean, there were multiple movies made about this guy and, and they made it in different ways. Like they didn't necessarily always call him Nicholas Flamel. But at the end, Nicholas Flamel, for those of you at home, he was a guy who worked in a, a rare books um, store, found a book that reportedly or allegedly had the um, recipe for immortality. And he was said to pass into immortality. Basically, he, he didn't he never died. He just kind of went away. And um, it, so, you know, referencing a guy like that is interesting because there is this strange overall theme of of individuals throughout history searching for immortality in different ways and 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 what i found too is there are are deep references to that in the symbolism behind hollywood as well i mean uh, i'm not sure john how much you're aware of even the term hollywood but hollywood itself is a very deep and entrenched phrase in the in the occult and in the occult history of the world that a lot of people don't know about. Why why call a random place in the United States Hollywood? Really, like is everything really random? Um, I mean, so ho Holly like Hollywood like Holly was used in um, 
in the Celtic arts, Holly wood or Holly was a very powerful plant um, and symbol for them. And, and it goes back very far across all of Europe. We have um, bows of Holly being handed out during Saturnalia in Rome. Before that, um, there was in ancient Greek a similar um, a similar holiday that apparently Saturnalia was referenced from, and that holiday was called something like Cronia or something. This is strange. Um, right. Well, wait. Okay. So, but wait. So, so Hollywood. So Holly, the wood. It's isn't it like it's, it's magic wands? It's like a magical. So this is the thing, wands, right? But then yeah. you get into Sat They were giving this out in Saturnalia during Saturnalia festivals. Yeah, the bo bo bows were given to people in in Saturn in Saturnalia as a gift. As a as gift. A, basically, every it was a thing. You gave huh. these bows, and what's strange is you know Saturnalia was a five day holiday between the seventeenth and the twenty. Right third or whatever um, 17 so that's a, that's oh, okay so that's the e uh the e equinox or, yes right. so the, yeah, right yeah. and and so it was celebrating the beginning of when they call i mean saturnalia and then what is the what is the sign the astrological sign related to saturn is capricorn so it was a bit like right. that period you know the the capricorn period was starting right there and yeah, and they would they would cre they would actually take these pieces of wood. They would they would consecrate them and then use them to ward off things or to. It was magical. So the wands actually came from Hollywood, and so they they say this phrase, "the magic of Hollywood." Right. Right. <laughs> it's like actually a thing, like the magic of Hollywood. The magic of Hollywood. Right. Yeah. We okay. So like Saturnalia is an interesting thing because. I didn't correlate this before, but I had read in some ancient ancient texts that that that's that winter uh, equinox. It's called an equinox at winter, right? I think that's what it is. So yeah. when we have the longest night, basically during the winter. Yeah, that's <clears> December twenty first. Right. So it yeah. can vary within the that solstice. range, but the solstice. The solstice. There we go. The solstice. Winter solstice. Yep. So it can vary across a couple of different dates in there. So they would literally have that on that period of time. And in other ancient texts, it talks about that is the time when dark spirits cause so much trouble. That night, dark spirits cause so much trouble across the earth. That's why you have Yule. You burn the Yule log in order to keep the dark spirits away. Right. Right. But it sounds like Saturnalia literally was about being part of that chaos. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes, it was. And actually, you're you're spot on. It it's not just so basically what they would do back in the day, it was straight up debauchery. In Saturnalia, they would they would have a uh they would pull out a statue of of the god Saturn. This the statue of God Saturn was also adorned with holly, with the holly right. plant. So there are statues that they found in the past where they didn't know if it was the this like um uh, symbol of winter or if it was the god Saturn and wow. and and it had Holly so they would pull out a statue of of the of of Saturn they would sacrifice to the god Saturn then they would they had an appointed master of ceremonies called the Saturnal Saturnalicius basically it was called the Saturnalicius princeps and his job was basically just to make these festivals crazy and and he he would he would make people do things. He would tell people to do things, and if they did not follow him, what he said, any of his commands, they would actually they would be humiliated. They would be humiliated, right? Yeah. So the and these parties were extravagant, right? There was like gift giving, gambling, feasting, general partying extravagance you know none of the social norms were were being followed they were purposely overturned they would even overturn master and servant relationships and um you know what's really weird is going even deeper into this they they say that what they were trying to do is go back to this golden age during this holiday mm -hmm. 
this golden age where where um f- no one had to work and food was plentiful and actually it was everyone was like equal this idea right. of like equality which like reminds me of some theologies or you know socio political right. things as well you know this idea of utopia and blah 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 Right. Well, that's it. I mean, shoot, we had remote viewed that. <clears throat> we remote viewed Saturnalia, like the the original thrust behind it. But like everything in the in this current human realm, I mean, I would still consider the Saturnalia as part of our current realm of experience and 3D Earth reality. And we when we had looked at the original intention behind it, it truly was. It truly was. They were trying to reflect something where they thought things were much better in the past. Right. That golden age idea. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely trying to reflect that. But things get super duper bastardized here on Earth and it becomes this shadow of it. It literally just becomes a shadow and it goes well, into debauchery ultimately. Yes. And, and also, well, and humans are always doing that. Right. And I mean, and what's also weird is like all of the same, all of these similar terms and symbols being now used for Christmas. It was the way to it was the way for folks to accept Christmas is to merge both of those. Right. Make Christmas on the 25th, you know, have holly up everywhere. Talk about the Yule Tide, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. Like same stuff, you know. It's all the same stuff. Right. Yeah. Not that Christmas is bad necessarily for those of you at home listening, more just like the the sort of efforts that they made to merge paganism with Christianity so that paganism would be adopted. I'm sorry, Christianity would be adopted among pagans across Europe and well, everywhere else. I mean, you know, look, look at, look at how it works. It's like, okay, so the darkest night of the year is when the sun completely dies, right? right? This is, this is beyond, this is pre-Christian. The sun completely get, dies. And then when the sun comes back up, it is the sun rising, Christ rising in a sense, right? So, so they, they, in the, they took this from pre-Christian to bring it in so that people would become involved in this, Right. Ultimately, it's, it's really what it comes down to. Right. So yeah. And I, I found it really interesting, too, that, you know, it, it did not take long for Saturn symbolism to come into this whole discussion. I mean, here we are. We're like, well, what does Hollywood mean? And then like with literally within a couple of minutes, it's like we're right back at Saturn again. What the but, hell you know, is Saturn? The, the, I'm telling you, this is like psychic train of thought like our conversations are literally like we're just going to start throwing stuff against the wall and then the stuff that sticks the most is like really what it is yeah yeah it's it's bizarre i mean you know and then the the symbol like there are there are several symbols for saturn right one of them is the the crescent with the star the star is in there the five you know five pointed star um you know you've got the the um, astrological sign for Saturn, which is basically like this cross and a uh, sickle coming out, which if you modify that just a little bit, looks very similar to the sickle in communism. And, right. and if you, if you look deeply into the origins of communism and those that are involved, um, Saturn was a gigantic part of this entire thing. This idea, this utopian idea of, of creating a, a, a new, another golden age, creating everyone equal um yeah it's uh it's it's quite quite bizarre well i, I mean astro theology astro theology is a thing um ancient ancient religions older religions used astro theology and i think it still exists under the surface today without most people putting any um any thought towards it it's still there Astro theology was always a thing in the deep past. And I think that that is an influence on the ages. And I think that there's there Saturn was a time when it was, when it was really focused on was really being influenced by the thought of astro theology on how that influences cultures and how that influences us. Um, but on top of that, from a remote viewing perspective, there are weird things going on around Saturn in general. I mean, the stuff that we've seen, like in general, there are weird things. And I have to agree with David Icke, who I don't normally pay much attention to, but I do yeah. have to agree with him on some things. And one of those things is this, this, this connection between Saturn and our moon. 
I mean, we've seen this. Mm. I don't know what the connection is to tell you the God honest truth, but we've seen this weird connection between Saturn and the moon. It has to do with this sort of like frequency, a frequency in general. And then when you get to the astronauts, I'm jumping all around here. When you get to the astronauts, when they flew over the dark side of the moon, they heard the, the music that sounded a lot like the music from Saturn, right? Right. When they yeah, they, the they, the what John is talking about, everybody at home, is that, that Saturn gives off a frequency and the moon also gives off a frequency. And if you listen to the two frequencies next to one another, they sound very similar. They, and they that, sound similar, right. And every planet gives off a different frequency. You can actually listen to the frequencies that they have in different places that give, you know, that that are like you can listen to them. And, and those two sound very similar. They do sound similar. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that they are. I don't really know what the connection is. But when we had originally looked at Saturn, um, especially one of the moons around Saturn to try mm. and see if we could find any life or any be type of beings that would, would live there. It's like when we viewed Europa, for it instance, was... which is not a, 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 a moon of Saturn specifically. I don't believe that one is. We had seen life there under the ice. Um, yeah, wait, it is, it is a moon of Saturn. We had seen life there under the ice, right? Right. Euro wait, let me just check really quick. Just so I don't sound stupid, I'll have to. Saturn edit has Titan. It's got a few. Um... Europa is from Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay, so I'll back up. When we had viewed Europa, for instance, um, a moon of Jupiter, we saw life under the ice there. Big, like worms, snake-like beings, creatures. And this is multiple blind remote viewers. And if you understand what remote viewing is, you've got you've got a team of people who are very trained in a specific methodology. They never know what they're looking at beforehand. But, you know, we all got the same stuff on this particular moon that under the ice, there are these big uh, serpent like snake like creatures like sea monsters. We would think of them living there. And so we started to look at Saturn some of Saturn's moons, you know, specifically Saturn itself is a gas giant. So I don't believe there'd be really, unless you're thinking about, you know, dimensional, other dimensional realms, not much. Saturn has there. 83 moons. 83 moons, right. Yeah. 83 <laughs> moons. That's a lot of moons. That's a lot of moons. So, you know, looking at, at, at the moons, for instance, we saw that it was like, okay, picture this. It's like a horror movie. We're from yeah. Earth. We're, we're, we're going towards Saturn because we want to go maybe explore the rings or one of the moons or something. It's a whole crew on a ship. As you get closer and closer to the moon, the crew starts to get infected by some paraphysical entity. Event horizon. Event horizon. Straight on. Right there. That was our data. That was our data. That, <laughs> that literally the crew goes mad. They start killing each other. And there's one person left that fully takes on uh, or the entity fully gets inside of them. I mean, this that was literally our data. It's like, don't go to Saturn. Yeah, it's never basically go to Saturn. Yeah, it's a it's horror the, movie. It is the movie event horizon. It in, is. In... But why would that be our data? How would I mean, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is being psychically. Uh, channeled to a degree, you know, these movies or they're told information, right? But that's, that's not a place to go. You don't want to go to Saturn. There's, there's some really weird, dark things going on there. Now, maybe during what we had in the past, a golden age of the past, Saturn played a different role. And that's why through astro theology, people had focused on that as being, oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But I don't believe at this point that it necessarily is something, you know, so great at this moment in time yeah and i mean we'll we're, we're actually we will come back and do an entire episode on saturn itself but because it's such like we could go off on it probably for hours but i i find it i find it very interesting that throughout history and all of the symbolism in our world currently that is of it, that is notable basically it has some hat tip to saturn right within it. Ho hollywood being being one of the all oh, right we're talking about hollywood <laughs> right but it's like why why is that why like the the you know why why is the communist symbol a you know 
so similar to the astrological sign for Saturn? Why is Turkey's um, flag the sign for Saturn in ancient Rome? Um, this crescent and star, right? And we find this crescent and star in so many different cultures and across so many different countries and flags and in different things. Um, even the Chinese flag is a star with a crescent of stars around it, right? And then, you know, we've got like, and so what is Saturn? I mean, then the weird thing is, is if you keep looking into it, it's like Saturn becomes a modifier for Satan, right? And what what this thing is trying to worship is this god named Kronos, Saturn, or Satan, or something like that, all the same thing, all the same symbolism, if you really look into it. And 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 so it's like all why are we calling it Hollywood, man? <laughs> like, unless like you know somebody knew what they were doing, I I think. Like somebody had some kind of you know, even even if it was a cursory knowledge of occult symbolism, Hollywood being such an important part of that occult or pagan symbolism, knew to name it Hollywood. And and then we're 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 putting these Hollywood actors and actresses' names in stars and then they're they're, you know, covering the streets um in in Hollywood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of don't get it. I really don't get it. The whole. Um, OK, so through the past, we've 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 told stories that get passed down, you know, over through over the campfire. Right. Right. I mean, this is how this is how stories of your culture were passed down through the ages so that you remember them. And now we have these movies. And really, that's really what it is now. Movies specifically are the campfire but, of today. Yeah, right. And and they they are across the board controlled, like, and Hollywood is that control structure. When you get right down to it, Hollywood is that programming structure uh, for people. What is this? This is a a company named Kronos, right, Lindsay? No, this is a scene from Pixar's Incredibles. Oh, they that's have right. Kronos as one of the operations. That's right. Yeah, and 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 that's what's weird is like the these symbols are everywhere, and there's tons of companies that have symbols related to Saturn in one way or another. A black cube is also another symbol right. for Saturn because of the hexagonal storm on Saturn, the planet. You know, if you if you like if you turn a black cube on its side basically or on its axis you see that it's a hexagon right it, it makes a hexagon um so a black cube and black cube worship there's there's companies called black cube then there's the black rock that's actually in the cube in um uh in saudi arabia right well wait go yeah, I mean, think of the movie hellraiser Sorry. think of the movie hellraiser yeah <clears throat> the, the movie hellraiser was this was the cube that Yes. And then it's, like, it's that's right. Go ahead. I mean, it was it was literally a twisted nightmare that the guy was within. Yes. Right? A twisted nightmare, which is really reflective of our data, really reflective. So not just not just that other movie, but but this, not just Event Horizon, but but Hellraiser as well. It's like Saturn is not just a planet. It's something bigger, something greater and energy. And right now it is just a twisted mind F. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that is the epitome of Saturn. A twisted nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um it's just why yeah, again, it's like why do so many corporations allude to Saturn symbolism? I mean, at at home, I mean, you can look into this yourself. It's not even hard to do. I mean, tons of banks have this symbolism. You know, yeah, and then we've got like the um, the symbolism in the in the Marvel movies. Uh, that's the Tesseract. It was a cube, right. right? That had like power to portal you into other dimensions, basically. Right. Um, and and then also Loki being like the yeah Black Rock, right? Okay, so Black Rock. We're bringing up a picture of Black Rock. Um, you know, what does that actually allude to? It's just why and why are you choosing these names? 
you know, like they're going to give you a company spiel. But when you look at all of this stuff, I mean, all together, right? Like there's there's tons and tons of co corporations that are using the rings of Saturn as their as their logos. And, you know, and then we've got all the black cubes that are up. Yeah, across New York, we went through looking at them. There's one in Astor Place, you know, um, there's one downtown near the Har Harriman building. Uh, right near where 9-11 happened. Uh, there's, you know, there's one in Santa Ana, um, California. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of cubes all over the world that have been put up. And the, all of those, whether the artist knew it or not, I guess, it alludes to this type of strange symbolism. You know, I, everything is an energy. Everything is energy. Bottom line, everything is energy, an energetic construct. Symbols are an energetic construct. They all vibrate to the same frequency. The same one symbol that's the same as the other symbol that somebody created is, is vibrating to a specific frequency, just in general. So when we looked at the, the relationship of the cube to Saturn, what is it for? What does it do? We got all this really strange data on how it, it, it kind of records into a data bank. It's almost like AI where it's recording energetically the, the thoughts of people, the karma of people, everybody that's, that is around it in a sense. And it records it. And it also tries to influence it. I mean, I'm the saying symbol really, itself, the symbol itself. Yes. The, I mean, it's weird data. Like, I don't know 100% what to make of it, but I do know that everything is energy and we interact with all sorts of different energies every single day. Symbols hold an energy that most people are absolutely unaware of. And when we looked at it, literally this thing had to do with recording and influencing, recording and influencing. And it, it, it like led back to this sort of negative, dark, almost dark AI kind of system. That is, that would be more, when we think of AI, we think about, well, ones and zeros. Um, we think about technology, but, but you have to think in terms of fourth, fifth dimensional type technology that is really energetic based. And I do believe that these cubes, as they relate to Saturn, it, it is, it's like this dimensional uh, construct, uh, dimensional type of AI that takes data and holds data in a different way than what we think. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, it's kind of like what you said, like these symbols have energy, right? Like why, why yeah. are, why are witches and all of these different people so bent on using certain types of symbols in what they're doing? The one of the, the chief one probably being like the pentagram, right? Um, they, you, a bunch of rituals will always be done in a, in a pentagram, right? But again, it's a bastardizing of it. Because it is, the, but, the but, pentagram... but is not all of this? Like, right. like, because right. they use the Hollywood symbol doesn't mean Hollywood is actually bad. It's actually probably exactly. got a lot of awesome properties to it, but like they're using it for stuff because they're, so they're utilizing whatever energy maybe they're finding in it. Right. Right. There's a, a pentagram turned upside pentagram turned upside down um, that we're showing right now. And you know, the, Holly the pentagram was what Venus, it was Venus and divine feminism. Right. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. As well yeah, as protection, like police officers will have that star on them because it's protection. Well, yeah, or they'll have a, a, a six-pointed star, which goes back to the hexagram. Yeah, Right. I mean, this and... is the crazy thing about symbols. They have so much power. This is an energetic construct that well, actually truly does things. And it's weird, too. Like, like okay, so is like the question really is like are we are we are we just crazy conspiracy theorists really or or, or is be. this stuff we, actually we could, be. <laughs> we could be but or is this stuff actually going on around us because like look like the paramount logo for instance right so the paramount logo it's a strange logo i mean allegedly that is supposed to be mount Herm Herm herman where these like angels basically descended to after um being cast out of heaven right and so they they arrive on on you know and you can go back deep into into some of the um you know um apocrypha some of these books that are out there that describe all of this stuff going on and 
you know, this is where the watchers came from, you know, and, and they're, they're alluding to this, these biblical things here, you know, the 21 stars also are, are supposed to represent these fallen angels, I think. Um, so it's just, you know, why use that symbolism? You know, that's a weird thing to me. I mean, Mount Hernan, where is Mount Hernan? Mount Mount Hermon um, is, Herman. yeah, it's in, where is it, Lindsay? I can't remember. It's the between exact... Syria and Lebanon. Right. Okay. Huh. Is it, uh, was it a volcano? I mean, wow, that's interesting. I mean, you know, ancient cultures used to have volcano gods, right? You got to wonder, like, Wow. You don't, yeah, and who knows back like back when this was being discussed, like what was even going on over here, right. what the entire earth looked like at that time, you know? Right, right. It also extends into Israel. Which so makes a lot of sense. So yeah. Paramount is using what could possibly be this mountain where the what the fallen angels came down. Yeah. Um, I mean that that's of course their logo. A- allegedly, right? Now it could right. be anything. It could just be a mountain, you know, like that. This is up like, you, you know, we put a clip up like this on Instagram and we're just going to get like attacked for even for talking sure. about it. Right. But it's, right, right. but what we're are just, these? Things? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. We're speculating. That's right. Yeah. This, this show is a, is a show about speculation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, these, these symbols are just, they're all, they're just ripe all over Hollywood. And I mean, again, it's like, I keep coming back to this pentagram, but it's everywhere. They call them Hollywood stars. Everybody know it's like putting their name in a star, you know? And, and like, we, we're going to be getting into in the, in the second episode, a little bit more about these like deals with the devil and possession and stuff, because there's a lot there. And what's strange is the, the quantity of actors and actresses talking about entities and entity attachment in interviews all over that you can actually find yourself very easily. And it's like, it's to the point where every, almost every actor, actress, or musician you look into has some information about this. It it just doesn't stop. And some of them are more notable than others, of course. Um, But yeah, it is. It's, it's just, it's really weird. Um, you know, and then like w- one of these weird, like one of the weird things that I found when, when we were looking into this was a documentary that I had never, I've never even seen before. And, you know, I'm always like, I'm always fascinated to find how all of these <clears throat> symbols actually correspond with one another, you know, and <clears throat> like you'll research one set of things and then there it's like everything is a gigantic Venn diagram. And this this documentary I found is called, um, I believe it's called the um, in the shadow of Hermes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so oh, yeah. under under the sign of 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 the scorpion, it's called in the shadow of Hermes. And if you look at the first review, it's about the Bolshevik takeover in Russia. And it's strange because a lot of the things that they're talking about here, like masonry, which is a lot of the you'll see a lot of the symbolism in music videos, like the the pyramid with the eye in it, you know, like the this quote unquote Illuminati symbolism is all over stuff in Hollywood everywhere. And they're using tons of um, Egyptian types of architecture. Right. Um and I'm, I'm actually fascinated to watch all of this because because there are there seem to be connections between a lot of this equality stuff and um, and some of this other symbolism we're seeing everywhere else. Um, and, and almost every music video now or even advertisement for luxury brands has some of this symbolism in it that we're all consuming all the time. It's being it's being like just stuffed down our throats and we don't even know. No, I mean, I mean, but is this trolling? Really, literally, is this trolling? Well, that is it. I don't know. Like, that's the thing is like, okay, so the, the, you know, this hand sign with the three fingers up, 
is it the the stars that are doing this or is it that they're the whoever the creative director is the photographer is is has a checklist of stuff they need to do yeah i think that i think that's what it comes down to as a psychological operation yeah i think i think so ultimately i think that's what it comes down to or or is it more like what some researchers have said where they actually have to tell you what they're doing it's a it's a part of it that they have to tell you as predictive programming or whatever it is they have to tell you what they're doing so that you knew and you accepted it into your life yourself right yeah right i mean and then and then uh i mean and then they and then the messaging that they put forth um throughout the films throughout their you know personal social media accounts whatever is just messaging a lot of it is just detrimental to spirituality in general um yeah, it's all degrading it, it is like and so it's really concerning to see that um as a social as this this somebody's in control of a social engineering tool that should not be in control of it that's really what it comes down to you can socially engineer people any direction you want why would you socially engineer people towards like degradation across the board as opposed to like higher ideals i mean most of the stuff out there that you see is literally i mean look at look at look at these these films about um robbing banks taking yeah taking stuff taking and if you get away with it that's great it's like the whole idea of of selfishness you know which is what satanism to begin with right it's the basically of, like it's saturnalia in all of our movies every day saturnalia, <laughs> right it's which, it's you can socially engineer people to be good to seek a higher spiritual idea but they are socially engineering people to do more and more you know heinous and bad well, things okay so so the idea behind that what is the idea behind that right so the the if we go occult on this um you know lucifer is trying to okay so like that's that's going like escalating this really quickly going straight to lucifer okay so let's say that's a thing uh whether you believe it or not let's say they believe it and that right. they're they're trying to socially engineer people to have so many desires, so many addictions, and so many needs that they do more, that they want more, and they can be more easily controlled. Because if people don't have those things, if they're socially engineered to be good and moral, they're not going, they're, maybe they're not going to buy as many things. They're not going to act the way that you want them in a predictable way. Because they're, they, there is no algorithm that can track kindness or goodness from a person's heart it like breaks right. the algorithm literally because it's a it's a it's a it's a divine thing that's coming through people that ends up you know like breaking a mold of of some type of idea of what they're going to do next and it would change it would actually change everything if that was a a commonly accepted thing right now now it's you know with everything with all of the social engineering going on out there right now you know everybody is I need more. I want more. Let me get this. And you know, what are you going to do? Right. If there's no, there's no idea about repercussions. I mean, whether that's repercussion from, um, an idea of your God, whatever, you know, that is, or the idea of karma, um, having to pay back the negative deeds and things that you've done. Right. There's no, there's none of that that goes into this. It's all about service to self completely and trying right. to push people towards, you know, all of this, reminds me ultimately of of the fall of atlantis you know mm. when you get right down to it that's what it reminds me of it's like before the fall of atlantis people were doing really bad things across the board i mean you know it was pretty extreme bestiality type stuff now come to us i mean i feel like our culture is following the same path i think we are i think this is this is the second fall of atlantis or maybe the 10th fall who the heck knows yeah gosh we have no idea i mean we're not you know that's a, a separate episode on on <laughs> our archaeology they found and stuff but but we have no idea how long it's gone on for but yeah it's uh i mean how long has this been going on for and and it, it does feel like that i mean everything is everything seems to be falling apart right now and if you and if you look at like look at how how much more extreme could music or the arts get aside from actually full-on 
murdering people or going to the next step, which is what a lot of these civilizations ended up going to before they were wiped out. I mean, look at look at like the, the you know, the gladiators. They're basically like killing people for sport. There's all kinds of sacrifices going on. They're sacrificing to their gods. They're losing their humanity. And then, uh, you know, one day, uh, you know, Pompeii gets hit by uh, Mount Vesuvius. I mean, you know, like there's 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 so many examples of of civilizations reaching some type of like decadence right where it's gone way too far and and honestly i think hollywood has been and hollywood not just hollywood but if if you merge hollywood of course with the music industry it's all kind of one thing that they've been driving people <laughs> excuse me they've been driving people to go in this in this direction like there's there's no turning back at a certain point it's it's bizarre yeah i don't think there's any turning back now at this point i think what what's done is done they engineer the the um you got to focus on the young culture the, the young people for the culture to engineer it into the future and that's really what they've been doing and i just think so, it's like like what okay unless if, people wake up and mass to it it's just gonna keep going it's crazy to me that when you start really paying attention to the backgrounds in these music videos, to the symbolism in these movies, and you simply just start listing them out, immediately you get called a conspiracy theorist. Right. But the thing is, why are those symbols in there in the first place? What, like if you, got, if you don't believe in anything, if you don't believe that those things are real, <clears throat> if you're just trying to quote unquote push the arts, Aren't there other ways to do that without bringing up symbols that you make fun of all the time right. that you that you attack other people for all the time? It doesn't make sense to actually pull those into the same content that we're being forced to watch when exactly. you're trying to tell us at the same time, you know, you're putting it in there and then you're telling us you don't believe in that. Do, like, right. who does that? Has anyone ever done that? I, I don't know of anyone that that puts content into their you know creative content into their stuff that they don't believe in right so to me it it's weird it's like that doesn't make any sense you know and and then at the same time is it all just this game to to pull out the people calling it out so that they can attack them and censor them or suppress them and you know like create create more control or something i don't i don't even know i mean you know, the Grammys were just on the other day and it was the most bizarre, you know, performance. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I the, mean, the, the, the like, artist. Yeah. The <clears throat> wearing the hat with the horns. Sam, yeah. Sam, 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 Sam Smith, you know, and slaves and, and cages and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so what's weird about this is like, you know, you've got. So is it a performance? I mean, like, look, we. You, at a couple of episodes ago, you and I were talking about um, about CERN and and the the tunnel that opened up over in Switzerland right. and this sort of performance they had to open it up. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So are they it's doing the ritual. it? Yeah. Is it like right? So is it a ritual or is it something that will pull out the the people with belief in the world to call it out and then they right. they end up attacking them? Which well, is, that was or the is funny it both? Thing. I mean, that was the funny thing, looking at news articles about this, and the news articles were literally, Republicans are angry about this. I mean, yeah. really divisive for, for one thing. But what they're saying is that if you're, if, if a lot of people don't think of themselves as being a Republican, when you get to this, you know, Republican Democrat <laughs> thing, they just don't think, of, they don't want to think of themselves as that. So they're automatically going to reject what the Republicans think about this, which actually is an opening for this it's actually yeah. an opening for it so i mean they're playing you guys they're playing you they're playing you best thing to do is 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 turn it all off and i was go gonna say direction. what in the world are we doing why are these people still relevant right these are not relevant people and and somehow somehow they're still getting you know screen time like they are very out of touch people with the world right. and and with the way things actually are and like 
like the, there there's very few things other than the people you trust around you and your family that that like really mean something right right well this is what i wonder about media on that scale like i have to wonder if media in general is not even reflecting the majority at, anymore at all and now they're just within their own little echo chamber and and even though nobody really believes as like they believe they're still just trying to make people believe it because you know because they can because well, they yeah, have well, all the money they need to just say. keep going and they don't need commercials or yeah they can just print more money when they need to right so that's really what has me wondering like what what where's the mindset of the majority of the people here i mean do does do most people agree with this is that why the media is putting it forward oh yeah give me satan Give me say, give me that Satan. I want to see more Satan on my TV, Dude, right? CBS. No, people aren't Dude. doing that. Okay. CBS was the one that put on the Grammys. What is the logo for CBS? Right. It's the eye. It's the eye. Yeah. And in a tweet to Sam Smith before he goes on, he says that CBS, their public account on Twitter is like, we're ready to worship. <laughs> Look, you can say that again. We're ready to worship. Oh, come on. I mean, and, and then you've got the eye there, and it's like the, and we're, we're back at the symbolism again. Right. Like the symbolism in Hollywood is everywhere. It's everywhere. Oh, all of these, so like, crazy. all of the media companies, all of these, you know, uh, all of these corporations. They're ready to worship. They're all, they're all in the same club. And then he does this so Satan worship thing, and then CBS is like, worship it. Oh, come on, man. You, they're so out of touch. We covered a oh, lot of right. stuff and, and and started even getting into some of the more uh, satanic stuff that we've seen uh, within Hollywood. In the next episode for this, you know, two-part uh, episode on Hollywood, we're going to get into deals with the devil and demonic possession uh, because it's actually, according to our research, quite rampant. And uh, we're going to get into a deep conversation uh, with John about more of this stuff. So uh, definitely uh, hang in there for the next episode. Thanks for being with us today. John, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, yeah. Throw your effing TV out the window. <laughs> yeah. Cancel cancel your accounts and throw your TV out the window because you're just going to get Illuminati symbolism in there anyway. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys. Well, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you for the next episode.